Okay, it's working. You're, you're elected. First of all, you have a very nice display here. Now, I'm a little confused about the Italians. I thought they were an ally of Germany, uh, but I understand that they changed sides in the middle of the, the war. Can somebody explain that? Uh, I've been nominated to all the turn down on the radio. Wow, you get that Italian songs all the way from Italy on that yeah. rain radio? And from 80 years in the past, too. We can still pick up on those radios. We have a guy in the room with an antenna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what happened with uh, what made Italy change sides? So that's a very good question. Um, the Italy was starting to lose the war by 1943. Okay. The African Front had collapsed and Sicily had been invaded by Allied powers. Okay. The ruling body didn't really exist anymore under fascism because everything was done by, by Mussolini. But he had a council of different ministers who could make certain decisions. Uh -huh. They voted to restore the powers of the military back to the king okay. instead of Mussolini, which effectively took his power away. Shortly after this, the king had Mussolini arrested, and he was out of a job. Okay. Secret negotiations had been going on with the Allies at this time because they knew that they were going to start invading through the Italian peninsula. And when was the year? Forty-three. Summer of 1943. Okay. So by September 8th, 1943, Italy had officially announced that uh, had had reached an armistice with the Allies okay. and achieved co-belligerent status. Co-belligerent. Right. The Allied powers, the, the British, the French, and the, uh, the Americans didn't want to see their former enemy as a lockstep ally, but they were mutually at war with Germany now. Mm -hmm. And so they continued the rest of the war on the same side until the, the war ended in 45. Okay. But what happened to Mussolini? Mussolini was late, he was being moved around from secret locations because the Italian government was concerned that the he, Germans... he must have had some people still backing him. Oh yeah, they did. Absolutely. They were still Italy turned into a civil war ah. right after all this. The Germans sprung Mussolini. They found out where he was being kept. And they brought him to Berlin. And at this point Mussolini had nothing left to offer. He was in a position of absolute powerlessness. Powerlessness. Mm -hmm. Hitler wanted a puppet figure to rule over the the Italian state and do his bidding. Mussolini really had no choice, uh, so he was made the head of the new Italian Social Republic, which okay. was a Nazi puppet state. Mm -hmm. uh, he, Mussolini really didn't have any power. All of that came to him through whatever the Germans wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So this was sort of a, a rump state that existed from the north to where the front lines were. Okay. And as the Allies moved up the peninsula, the Italian Social Republic got smaller and smaller and smaller until it ceased to exist. So what happened to him? He tried to escape along with his mistress, Floretta Patacci, and certain other fascist hierarchs who st stuck with him. Um, but his convoy, in which he had tried to escape with some Germans, was stopped by the uh, partisans. Okay. I believe these were communist partisans who were looking for Italians. They found Mussolini and uh, they captured him and all of the other big shots. Uh, they put him in a house overnight and they were deciding what to do. Okay. They determined that they were going to execute him. Mussolini and Patacci were shot. Their bodies were later transported into Milan. They were put on public display, hung upside down at the oh. gas station. And the people went and basically tore the bodies to pieces. Oh my. So that was the, the ignominious end to... Uh, to uh, Mussolini. To Mussolini. Okay. Now, can you tell me a little bit about these these hats here? I see you have a steel helmet. Why don't you take one? Right. Larry? And you have these very colorful, I guess you'd call them pith helmets. Yes, exactly. Well, the steel helmet, uh, this would be, uh, <laughs> we don't need this. Uh, the steel helmet is, you know, sort of a, a general you know, it had a leather liner. It had it, it had little uh, 
vents. These are rivets, but they also would air, uh, allow, air allow a little mm -hmm. bit of air to uh, to get into your skull. Um, but in North Africa, which is what we're mostly representing, the pith helmet was more popular because it was lighter and it would, you know, sort of keep the sun off you. Um, and uh, this one is uh, the badge is of the artillery, the, the cross cannons with the grenade. Uh, infantry would have their own. The this particular one is uh, the. What the is that? A bird's nest? It is a cockerel's feather, and the uh, the unit it represents is the Bessalieri, who were sort of the Ita basically the Italian light infantry, but also motorized infantry, and the uh, the feather comes from when they were first formed in the 1850s, mm -hmm. uh, and they still wear them to, to this day. As a matter of fact, there's pictures of them in, in Afghanistan. Wearing, still wearing Still it. wearing the, the, the cockle feather. Amazing. Now, I see a rifle here. It's kind of short. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it here. You want to show the, the long one too? And has a... So we have two Carcano rifles. This okay. one is the M41, is the uh, longer rifle. And this one is the Cavalry Carbine. They shoot the same ammunition, the 6.5 millimeter. They carry six rounds in the clip. Uh, what's different is uh, that this one could accommodate a regular type of bayonet if you put it on the end. Whereas this one over here has the bayonet built into it already. Now you said cavalry. Did they actually have a horse cavalry? They, they did. did. Yes. Yes. Italy had a lot of horse units. Uh, in fact, Italy was uh, the last country to launch a major cavalry attack in World War II. That happened against the Soviets on mm -hmm. the Eastern Front. This type of rifle was preferred by a lot of troops because it was lighter and a little bit smaller. It's still very accurate. Uh, they're sighted out to 1,500 yards, This is, in, which is pretty impressive. I doubt that you would shoot it frequently at that range. Um, but yes, it's the same type. Uh, Italy was trying to change over its calibers to a, to a 7.35, I believe, just before World War II started. But then they figured that Mm -hmm. When the conflict began, this is not a good time to start changing up ammunition. So mm -hmm. 6.5 is what they had in World War One, and they continued the, the, the same use in World War Two. Now, what's in this box over here? Is this a? This is a, Is that their version of a footlocker? Well, this is, this is my version of a footlocker, where we keep all of our stuff. Like this is a, uh, a gas mask bag, the mm -hmm. M33, and I believe. Well, you've got the other version of the gas mask bag. Since gas warfare didn't feature prominently in World War II, this was often used to carry regular things inside that you might have to have on you. Sort of a man bag, I guess. Sort of, yeah. Exactly. Your merce. <laughs> so the ammunition pouches were worn on a belt, and the belt was worn around your waist, like that. Mm -hmm. So this would carry the clips of the ammo. What, how many clips were in there? You said there were six in a clip or six, five in a clip? Six rounds per clip, and uh, you could fit four, eight in total here. Okay. So you'd have you'd have a good amount of ammunition right to hand. If you needed more, you can mm -hmm. always get some. Combat knife. Our uh, water bottle. Okay. One liter. One liter. Not much when you think about it. Mm-hmm. And this is a res resin replica of a hand grenade, uh, a Breda. Uh, they nicknamed it the Red Devil. Ooh. Yeah. And now if you pull this open, it wasn't a timed grenade. This was an impact grenade. So if you did throw it and it landed in something that was soft, like sand, it may not go off, which posed a great danger for later on. So it had some drawbacks, I guess you could say. Now, what are these photographs and things that are on here? Well, this one's the boss. What's Benito? She's over there. Okay. Uh, this one I thought was interesting. This is La Madonna della Manganello. And this was actually a since destroyed uh, statue, a propaganda version of the Virgin Mary. 
and which mm. she's carrying, if you look, a billy club. A in billy her hand. club, yeah. Right, it's not really the image that you think of the Virgin Mary having a, a, yeah. a nightstick in her hand, <laughs> but uh, maybe Catholic school kids around the world would, would relate. I don't know. Uh, so I just put these things here to give a sort of a, a personal flair to, the, to our box of stuff. Now here. I see there's a, uh, a flag, an uh, insignia with the Oh, this with the flag on it, yeah, and you have a flag over here. Mm -hmm. um, the Italian flag that I'm used to seeing doesn't have that that crest or crown. Yeah, the thing the, in the middle. The badge in the center. When Italy was a kingdom, this is the symbol of the royal family of Savoy. Okay. And when Italy became a republic, they removed this, so it's only green, white, red. But from 1861 to 1947, when they changed over to the Republic, this was the flag of Italy. Uh, 